You're listening to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. And here's Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan. I now have the infamous Michael Maher with Prime Lending on the line. How you doing, Michael? Good. Happy to be here. Excited to go over some exciting stuff and just uh, see if we can help some people out. Yeah, you know, a couple of things I wanted to dive into. As we know in the real estate business, and I think more and more people are realizing, we're down in inventory quite a bit from a year ago. And when that happens, and when I say down, I think I looked the other day or a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, we had something like 114 listings in the Flex MLS, which is primarily Leavenworth, Wenatchee. And that was a year ago. And we had 30 last month. So we're down about 75% in inventory, which is creating uh, obviously pressure on price. So we've seen some unprecedented appreciation. And I personally have worked with you on a couple transactions for our brokers and including uh, a deal we're working on for my son. And so I thought we could just kind of dive into how important it is to have a team and how important it is to be creative and, and maybe think about things outside the box that are perfectly legal, perfectly ethical, but not everybody in the masses looks at the world the same way, right? So yeah, if exactly. it's okay with you, why don't we dive into what, what, what it means to be a team player as a mortgage company from your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So most important thing is we look at every transaction in abundance. You know, there's enough deals for everyone to go around we like to carve our little piece out and and really let people know that we like to think outside the box. And if you give us a chance, we think you'll be very happy in in what we can do for you and some creative things we can come up. And in the case with your son, we can go into that a little bit. As far as you, there was a, a property that was listed and it had been on the market for how long was it? Uh, yeah, it, it, it been on the property on and off for, you know, a different couple different real estate brokers in the past. And, and the reason was that it was a beautiful piece of property, but the home was 90 plus years old. And, yeah. and for a 90 year old home, it's actually doing pretty good, but there have been a couple of code changes in 90 years, believe it or not. Just a couple. Yeah. So it was a very difficult home to finance in a traditional method. So um, what I love about your ability is in, in the seller, the buyer, in this case, we sat down and we said, okay, well, here's our challenge. We had an inspection done. We looked at the house and we're like, oh boy, you know, there's no heating source. That's a problem. There's this, there's that, there's this, there's that. All these things add up to, to some money, but the property was really nice and the home had some good bones. However, we didn't really know for sure until we got the appraisal what actually needed to be done to actually make the home financeable. So right. we, we actually used your conventional rehab or enhancement loan, we like to call it. And we basically said buyer and seller agree that this is the price today. And this is what I did in this deal. This is the price today. And this is the, you know, uh, the loan type that Mason's going to get, which means with your rehab loan, maybe you could just quickly for those that haven't heard about it. I know we talk about it a lot, but I always know there's people that are new listeners. So could you just kind of briefly yeah. explain what that is? Yeah, basically, um, in layman's terms, it's just you finance a property, you pay X number of dollars for it, and then you get a bid from a licensed and bonded contractor for whatever work you need to be done, whether that's putting in a new septic system, putting a new roof on it, there's really nothing you can't do. Then you take that bid and you finance it on top of the price and you have your new acquisition cost, your new total price, you would say. And then you're not having to come in with that money out of pocket. You can still do three, three and a half, five percent down on some of these loans. So it's minimum down and it allows you to hold, hold on to the cash that you do have. Or if you don't have the cash to take advantage of the bank's money and super cheap interest rates right now and get the work done and pretty much gain instant equity as because the appraiser is going to turn around and give an appraiser or give an appraisal report as if the work has already been done and give value to that home as if it's already been done. So it's very, it's a very unique program that gives people opportunity to get the work done after closing without having to foot the bill. Yeah. And what, what this particular house, because we don't know for sure what needs to be done, 
right? Because there is right. some subjectivity in the decision-making process from the appraisal. And so what right. I did to be creative on the deal writing is I said, all right, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, once we know exactly what has to be done, we'll both have to agree that the price that we chose is the right price. For example, if the work comes back much, uh, we, cause we have an assumption, we, we think we know, but let's say instead of $50,000 in improvements, it's a hundred thousand dollars in improvement. Well then the buyer would have the opportunity to say, okay, I don't want to do that unless you change the price conversely and simultaneously. Let's say it comes back and instead of the estimated $50,000 in this example, it's only $20,000 in improvements. Well, then we, then the seller has the right, the unilateral right to say, unless we change the price, adding 30 grand to the price tag at that time, once we know for sure what the work needs to be done to qualify the house, because that's the thing, the buyer needs to qualify, but so does the house in order to conform to a conventional loan program or any loan program. Well, in this example, Correct. both buyer and seller will have a, an opportunity through creative deal structuring and creative financing to reevaluate their position. And there's no hard feelings if either one of them say, well, this isn't going to work for me. So we basically have an opportunity to renegotiate the price based on the exact work that needs to be done that's called out in inspections. So to me, that's yep. an additional step of creativity. And again, when you're down 75% in inventory, I'm encouraging people to get real creative right now, because if you're following the rules and you're not thinking a little bit outside the box, you're probably going to pay a premium because we've been appreciating at an unprecedented rate. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't know. The other thing I think that you guys do as a team is, is wonderful is that if you think about how many people are in real estate, not everybody is created equal. Not everybody has the same level of experience, coaching, mentorship, et cetera. And you're willing to help explain as a lender to the other side of the equation. Like if we're representing a buyer and you're working for the buyer, you're willing, isn't it true? You're willing, cause you do it for us all the time, call the other agent and explain the situation, whether it's this loan we just talked about or, or the qualifications of the buyer as you see it, et cetera. Is that correct? Absolutely. And in an ever changing industry that we are in where on a daily weekly basis, guidelines for mortgages are constantly changing so what you think you knew yesterday all of a sudden changes tomorrow and now everything is completely different than what it used to be so by giving a call or or an email or, or just contacting whatever agents involved and letting them know the specifics of the loan how well qualified the buyers are what the program actually means what to expect throughout the entire process and any surprises that may come up and just nipping those right right then and there, it doesn't leave a lot of room for questions from either side. So it just gives a lot more clarity and it allows for a more transparent transaction, really. Yeah, I'll give you another great example that you guys are, are, are really astute about. And that is in a market where you're appreciating as fast as we are. You gotta think about appraisers' challenges. And appraisers are just historians. So when they, they appraise the home, they have to go back based on history, not based on current or future information. So when you're appreciating rapidly and you have such a short supply with very, very low interest rates, sometimes the home sells, especially in a market, you know, with that 300 to $400,000 mark where there's just not a lot of inventory and yet there's a lot of demand. A lot of people qualify for that locally, that price point. Well, one of the things we'll do is talk about either buying interest rates down even further, or maybe we'll talk about instead of putting 20% down, put 10% down, and then keep some of the money for reserves in order to buy down the appraisal. If the home doesn't appraise for what you had to pay to get the home in, let's say a bidding environment where there's many people trying to buy the house. Often the home yeah. escalates quickly through what we call escalation addendums. Well, between our professionals at Keller Williams and the training and education that we do daily and weekly combined with prime lending and Michael Maher and Sharon Crockett, we're able to work as a team to get you in a position strategically to have the best outcome and the most predictable outcome, which is always a plus in real estate predictability. So I, I just want to applaud your and acknowledge your guys' willingness to do that, Michael. It's, it's yeah, not, no, I appreciate that. You know, we've been working together and coast and radio. And you know, the other thing I wanted to give you kudos for is, uh, you know, we're working on fusion homes. Well, you first, 
when I first got you guys to go down there, you were jumped on the opportunity. You drove to Oregon and, and toured some factories with us. That was two years ago. And we're finally getting to a point where Fusion Homes, is, in, in my opinion, is going to be a reality. I am still like a little pit bull on a pork chop. And uh, I am working some pretty exciting uh, affordable housing opportunities. And the fact that you're willing to do that says a lot to me. You're willing to, even though it was going to be two to three years, maybe before we actually get this concept off the ground, which, you know, for people that haven't been entrepreneurs, getting something off the ground for two or three, you know, it takes two or three years is pretty normal, right? But you guys just dropped everything and went down and learned about it. And so guess who's going to be the most knowledgeable about these affordable housing programs and product that we could possibly do in the near future. So I just want to give you guys uh, applause for that because it's rare. Yeah, and we're excited too. We we know what your vision is, and we're excited to to see it out till the end and and see what it becomes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta be you gotta be moving and shaking. You know, my dad passed away about a year ago, but he was really famous for saying, "Hey, it's hard to go forward forward when you're standing still, right?" And yeah. and sometimes you gotta you gotta go left to go right eventually. And I'm happy and I'm thrilled about it. Interest rates are super low. What's your number, Michael? If somebody wants to get a hold of you guys. Yeah, 425-760-8824. All right. Well, Michael Mahar and Prime Lending, thanks. Hey, you guys, get outside in the post land of COVID. Let's have some fun again. My new model at Keller Williams is to hell with COVID. Let's go have some fun. Thanks for tuning in on this beautiful day in August. It's a brand new day. Just came my way. Yeah, home.